Hello everyone, my name is Jenzy and uh, I wanted to talk to you about some uh, recent results that we got on the sign of um, reliable sample preparation for a Brando electrochemical TEM. And, and the goal of this talk is to kind of make you a little bit more familiar with this aerosol jet printing technique and show you how, what can it achieve and how it can be useful for the Operando electro electrochemical TEM. Uh, so first things first, um, TEM has been, you know, for years now, um, very valued as a, as a characterization technique of different materials thanks to its very high spatial resolution, but also thanks to some analytical signals you can get out of your specimen. And uh, one of the most exciting things you can do with a TEM is, is try and do some operando studies with electrochemical systems in it. And for that, we need to think about how to make the specimen do the electrochemistry inside of that TEM. And historically, there are kind of three main ways of doing that. Um, the first two um, are open to the vacuum of the microscope column, where you could either use some liquids, liquid electrolytes that don't really evaporate under vacuum, or uh, your whole electrochemical system has to be solid state. Um, the third one, which will be the, the concern of today's talk, is a so-called sealed liquid cell, where we have um, some small volume of a liquid organic electrolyte, just like you would use in a normal battery, sealed between two thin silicon nitrate windows that um, still allow some electrons to come through. And the cell, and because it's quite thin, you can still see through it while separating the liquid environment from the ultra high vacuum of the microscope column. And um, this, this side of things has been um, developed uh, in, in a few companies, but uh, here we'll be using the, the protochips uh, chips uh, as shown here, which essentially have a small um, silicon nitrate window, um, a, a thin membrane if you, if you like, and then on top of this uh, one of these chips there are uh, patterned electrodes, in this case platinum, and one of them is positioned over the window so you can look at the electrochemistry happening while it's uh, in the TEM. And now what, what's the kind of challenge of this is that we have this setup and we would like some material to be put on, on this electrode. Um, and typically you could do it with just electrochemical deposition, which is great. Uh, but if you want to use some industrially relevant materials uh, that usually come in powder form, it's a bit of a challenge because this electrode is about 160 microns long, about 25 microns wide. And the distance between this electrode and the next one is not that big either. So you need a technique that will allow you to, to produce, you know, small features in a controlled uh, manner in, in a specific place of that chip, uh, while also, you know, not having too much overspray, not damaging the chip itself and so on. And our idea was to um, take aerosol jet printing as, as a method of, of kind of putting the material where it should be. And this has been done uh, in the Henry Royce Institute uh, laboratories in, in Cambridge. Um, and briefly, the, the kind of working principle of this technique is that we put the material powder in a, in a container uh, with some solvent as a suspension, and that material is being um, attacked by ultrasounds to, to make it into an aerosol. As uh, so essentially small particles of that material are kind of trapped in, in little bubbles of the solvent. And that is being carried by the carrier gas uh, through some tubing. In this case, the carrier gas is nitrogen. And then uh, there is a second flow of gas called the sheath gas that surrounds the carrier gas of the aerosol and kind of allows for, for tuning of the, of the shape of this, uh, of this flow. And essentially by tuning the, the, the flow rates, the pressures and so on, uh, we can create a, a flow that kind of focuses down on the substrate and deposit the materials on, in, in a very kind of confined space. Uh, so what can it achieve? Uh, here in, in A and B, we see two sets of five lines. Uh, the top one is made with LTO, a commercially available and widely used anode, uh, lithium, anode material for lithium ion batteries. And then B, it's NMC811, a cathode material. And uh, as you can see, you can, you can print quite uh, reliably um, narrow lines of, of these two materials that have the, the widths or, or the feature sizes on the order of 25 to 30 microns in this case. Uh, but it uh, depends on the material and the conditions and so on. 
Um, so essentially, this this gives us this opportunity to to produce uh, tiny features that are just on the right size um, um, when it comes to the deposition on the operando electrochemical chips. Um, and then if we try and print these materials on the actual chips, if we zoom in onto this working electron on top of the silicon nitride window, uh, we can print uh, on top of it, and uh, we can actually see in, under an SEM that this material indeed goes on the on the electrode, and we can control the the coverage uh, of these layers, as well as the composition. So in this case, in the in the blue and red, uh, these are kind of two different inks. One is just pure NMC811. The other one is an NMC811 with a conductive carbon additive. Um, so we can kind of mix and match different materials to to form more complex structures, uh, which can be quite useful and and kind of exciting for the electrochemistry side of things. Um, and then we can also print the the outer electrode for you know to actually form a battery on this chip and then this on this side we printed LTO which would be an anode in this case um, and again this kind of nicely highlights another aspect of aerosol printing which is that you can pre-program shapes and just execute them uh, with the printer itself I think I forgot to mention but essentially how you make the shapes themselves is by having the substrate move under the nozzle um, which is quite easy and uh, you can just draw a shape in, in CAD and just upload it. Um, so that's that. And then, you know, to kind of sum a little, sum a little bit of these points up, um, we can print arbitrary shapes. We have high kind of position resolution or accuracy about 10 microns or so, uh, probably a bit less. Um, the feature size can be down to about 10 microns, but in this case we are kind of limited by the materials themselves with kind of bad materials like these, and bad for printing of course, not electrochemistry, we can reach about 30 microns uh, feature size. It's quite versatile in terms of what can be printed, essentially anything that is relatively small in, in particle size and can be made into a stable suspension is fine. And then there is the ability to create complex structures for either mixing the materials in the ink to start with or through layering, essentially printing a few layers of one material and switching to, to a different one. And then the sixth one I have highlighted is size selectivity, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in slightly more detail. Um, so if we look at the NMC811 before printing, uh, just as received powder, it's, it's in the form of these big spherical secondary particles. Uh, on the order of 3 to 20 microns in diameter. Uh, and these are made in turn of, of smaller primary particles that are on the order of 100 nanometers to, to a micron or so. And then after we sonicate this in, in, the, in the printer itself to form the aerosol, these big particles are rather fragile and brittle. And it, it is known that they tend to break up a little bit. Uh, and in, in the sonication step, they, they partly break into these smaller particles, which then are selectively printed. Um, this can be also visualized by a histogram of what, uh, you know, the, the, the sonicated NMC would be uh, kind of based on, on this, this type of an SAM image. And what is the printed NMC that comes out the nozzle? And there seems to be a cut of size of about half a micron, which is very fortunate in a way, because with the operanda TEM, we want um, as thin samples as possible and usually people who state you know 200 nanometers is about right or or less in terms of thickness that you can actually see through um, so this uh, allows to have particles that are smaller than than half a micron which provides some you know mass or volume of the particle to give you an elect elect electrochemical signal while still being transparent uh, to the electrons um, and then we can confirm that indeed we have particles that can be seen, seen in, a, in a TEM. This is TEM image with this black part on the right side being the working electrode made of platinum. And then these particles are in contact with it. And we can confirm with the um, electron diffraction that this is indeed still, still an MC811. Um, and then to kind of confirm the, the electrochemistry of the material that is being printed, uh, we did a quick check essentially by printing a 12 millimeter circle on aluminium foil and testing that in, in a traditional coin cell setup. 
and basically we chose LTO for this test because it, it, it shows this very beautiful and uh, very distinct plateau at about 1.55 volts that's also present in the printed samples kind of overlaid with the signal from aluminium foil itself because this, this is essentially due to the, um, the coverage of the LTO being quite small. Essentially, it's a very, very thin layer of LTO and we still get some side reactions from the aluminium foil. And this uh, brings us to the summary. Uh, so briefly, uh, the electrochemical TEM is, is a very valuable characterization technique, but so far it has been limited um, to materials that can be essentially made in, in the chamber in situ. And we kind of try and tackling the, the challenge of putting industrially relevant materials in there. Um, and for that, we, we propose that aerosol jet printing could be used and, and it has a, a variety of features that are very useful for this purpose. Um, so first of all, we can just start with powders that can be just bought. Um, and then it offers high spatial resolution enough to, to print selectively on a specific um, electrode of the chip. Uh, it allows for size selectivity to kind of filter out the, the particles that would be too big and either obscure the view or even uh, break the membranes if they are really big. Um, and then it also offers quite a lot of versatility and flexibility in terms of how we're printing, what kind of materials, what kind of layers, how many layers, what's the coverage and, and so on. Um, but of course, it, it, it's not limited to to just the STM, so I'm sure there are other applications where thin layers of, you know, controlled features would be useful. And then, you know, the next steps is, is to take the printed samples and actually do some electrochemistry with them. And with that, uh, thank you for your attention. And I also need to thank some, some of my um, funding buddies uh, that, that have made this research possible, as well as all of the co-authors who have been massively help helpful. Um, thank you.